Les from Delta, and today we are going to calibrate an FMP 100 and 150. Now, just like I said in the how to calibrate an FMP series handheld, it's a special set of steps that you need to go through for the 100 and the 150. This calibration technique is not for the FMP 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50. If you have one of those, check out our other video. Link is in the description. For our FMP 100 and 150, the biggest issue and difference is we have a touch screen. So we're going to go to a few different places the actual calibration process itself and the things you're going to need for it are the same. We're going to start off by going to our calibrate menu. If you don't have a little stylus like this, uh, I recommend either using your pen, obviously make sure that the point is retracted. You don't want to write on the screen. I have also had a lot of luck with the stylus out of my Samsung Note phone. I've also seen people use the Apple Pen as well. Biggest thing that you want to consider if you're going to get a replacement stylus for your FMPs is that you get one for a resistive touchscreen. That's different from your normal cell phone, which has a capacitive touchscreen. Basically, the difference is I really can't just use my finger to interact with the things on the screen. Resistive styluses have a hard point to them. I'll drop a link to some really nice ones that I've found on Amazon. Great thing about them, they have a little tether on them, so you can just tie them off to your probe and keep them with your unit. Anyway, back to how to calibrate. We are going to go calibrate. Now we've got a bunch of different choices in here and here's where you want to always go when we're talking about calibrate and it is corrective calibration because we want to correct the calibration that's already stored in the unit and true it up to either the coating that we're using or the substrate that we're using. If you have the option to use two different calibration standards, I highly recommend that you do that. Typically, you are going to want a calibration standard that is just below your required range and just above. So for today, let's say that our range is 30 microns to 60 microns. So we are going to want to have a low value less than 30. 22.86, pretty good. And above 60, 73, that'll work as well. And then when we're done with our calibration and we want to test everything, we're going to want one right in between as well. So that's where our 48 and a half is going to come into play. So we're using two. So we're going to say continue. And it's going to ask you to measure on base material. And it's going to remind us what material we're using. In this case, we are set up for ferrous or steel substrates. If we had an eddy current probe on there for non-ferrous substrates, it would say NF. If we had a dual probe, it would give us the choice of which one we wanted to do, and we would actually make that choice by measuring on the substrate that we want to use. We are on steel. I have got a nice piece of cold milled steel. If you have an uncoated piece of your substrate, use that, you will get better results. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take five measurements on here. I like to use five because it gives me a nice sample size to work with and a nice average. So one, two, three, four, and five. The numbers that we get for these results really don't matter. So we're gonna hit continue. And now it's going to ask for cal rated value. If you have previously used the same foils that you've got, your cal rated value may already be filled in. That we are going to make sure that the numbers in the unit match the numbers that are on our foil. First things first, let's take five measurements on this. One, two, three, four, 
one, two, three, four, and five. Now we have our foil and we are gonna hit Cal rated value. We are gonna check our unit value. You always, always, always wanna make sure that the units, the that the units you have programmed in here are gonna be the units that you're selecting the value for. So we're in microns, we're gonna take the microns and simply make this value equal the value on our foil. Okay. So now we've taken our five measurements, we've made sure that the cal rated value is the same. We are gonna hit continue. And now it's gonna ask for our second cal rated value. That is gonna be our high standard. Again, five measurements. One, two, three, four, five. Cal rated value, because obviously this is not a zero foil. We need that number. Cal rated, 73.66. So now that number and that number match, and we are gonna hit OK. Corrective calibration finished successfully. If you see that message, you're done. And that's a good thing. If for some strange reason, something went wrong in the calibration, it would tell you the step that you need to repeat, repeat that step and you should be okay. So once my calibration is done, I always like to check my values. And that's where that 48.5 value foil comes in. That was the foil that was right in the middle of our range. That is a perfect place to test our calibration. And again, let's just take five readings. One, two, three, four, five. Nice thing about the FMP, 100 and 150, we have got the mean value right here. We don't have to go anywhere to find it or do anything else special. 47.8 on a 48.5 micron foil is fantastic. Calibration done. Les from Delta, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our calibration and equipment solution videos. Video didn't answer your questions? That's okay. Click the link below, go to our website, you can contact us through there, or our Facebook page.